this is Quantum Phenomena Lesson 3. So we're going to do some energy level exam style problems. First of all, a bit more information. Excitation using photons. So we discussed in the last lesson that we can excite using electrons. So an electron can collide with an electron in the ground state. And depending on how much energy it deposits, transfer that ground state electron into higher energy levels. The same can also occur with photons. So an incoming photon may not have enough energy to cause photoelectric emission, but it may have enough to cause excitation. So in this diagram, an incoming photon is absorbed by the electron in the atom, and the electron moves to a outer shell. However, excitation will only occur if the photon's energy is exactly equal to the difference in energy of the initial and final energy level. And if this is the case, the photon will cease to exist once its energy is absorbed. The reason it has to be exactly equal is because photons will deposit their energy as an entire packet of energy or quanta. So I've got this question. So we covered this last lesson. So if you want to pause and have a go, and then I'll show you how to do it. So the values of the lowest three energy levels in a particular atom are shown on the table. The diagram shows these energy levels together with the ground state of the atom. So when an electron moves from level 3 to level 1, the radiation of frequency 6.2 times 10 to the 14 hertz is emitted. What is the frequency of the radiation emitted when the electron moves from level 2 to level 1? So pretty straightforward, we just look at the energies for level 2 and 1. So we need to do the difference between these. So we've got 3.39 electron volts, subtract 1.51 electron volts. And that gives us a difference of 1.88 EV. Then we just need to turn that into joules. So we need to do the 1.88 electron volts multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19, which gives us an energy of 3.008 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Then we need to use E equals HF. E equals HF. So rearrange that to get frequency. So frequency is energy divided by the Planck constant. So energy is 3.008 times 10 to the minus 19, as we just calculated, divided by the Planck constant, which we should know. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. And that gives the frequency of 4.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Hopefully that's okay. Let's move on to the next one. So if you want to pause and have a go at this one. The diagram shows an energy level diagram for a hydrogen atom. Electrons with energy 13 electron volts collide with atoms of hydrogen in their ground state. What is the number of different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation that could be emitted when the atoms de-excite? So essentially what will happen is the electrons in the ground state will go up into different energy levels. And once they get there, they will spend a very short amount of time there in the microsecond range and then come back down. And as they come back down, you get the emission of photons. So if the electrons have got 13 electron volts of energy, we need to see where the electrons from the ground state could actually reside. So if we do the 13.6 subtract the 13, we get 0 0.6 electron volts. So it can't get to level 4. However, this electron will end up at level 3. So we need to see what wavelengths could be emitted. So we could go from level 3 to level 2, so that would be one wavelength. Then we could go from there to there, that would be another one. Then we could go from 1 to the ground state. We could also go straight from level 3 to level 1. We could go from level 3 straight to the ground state. And finally we could also go from level 2 to the ground state. And each one of these energy transitions will cause a photon. 
to be emitted of equivalent energy to the energy difference. So what is the number of different wavelengths? There are six wavelengths possible. Okay, let's move on. So the same diagram, but I want you to calculate the shortest and longest wavelength of emitted photons that's possible. So if you want to pause and have a go at that. So the equation that links energy, change in energy and wavelength is E equals HC over lambda. So from that, for the, for the shortest and longest wavelength, so the shortest wavelength would require the biggest possible energy change. And the biggest possible energy change is level 3 down to the ground state. And then for the other one, which is the longest possible wavelength, that would be a corresponding smallest energy change. And the smallest energy change is level 3 to level 2. So we need to calculate both of these. So from 3 to the ground state, and then from level 3 to level 2. So the 1.51 EV minus 0.85 EV gives a change in energy of 0.66 electron volts. And then we just need to multiply that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And that gives us a change in energy of 1.056 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Then we need to use that number to find the wavelength. So that would be, we're going to use E equals HC over lambda. So lambda is HC over E. So H is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the energy, which is 1.056 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That gives a corresponding wavelength of 1.88 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, or 1,880 nanometers. So that's the longest one. Now I'm going to clear this and we'll calculate the shortest one. So the shortest wavelength, remember, will correspond with the largest energy change. So that would be the 13.6 subtract the 0 0.85. So the biggest change in energy to get the shortest wavelength is 12.75 electron volts. So if we multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, that gives the largest change in energy of 2.04 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. So once again, we're going to use the e equals hc over lambda. And the wavelength will be hc divided by e. Let's put the numbers in, so 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the change in energy, the 2.04 times 10 to the minus 18. And that gives a wavelength of 97.5 times 10 to the minus 9, which is 97.5 nanometers. Hopefully you calcul calculate both of them correctly. Let's move on. So if you want to pause and have a go at this, and then I'll take through the answer. So the diagram below shows the lowest three energy levels of a hydrogen atom. An electron is incident on a hydrogen atom. As a result, the electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom is excited to the N equals 2. The atom then emits a photon of characteristic frequency. Explain why the electron in the ground state becomes excited. That's pretty straightforward. So some form lines up. So the energy is transferred. Energy transfer from the initial incidence 
Evet John. So that's this first one here. Electron is incident on the hydrogen atom. And it deposits, you know, a specific energy. So if you, the second mark would be to actually give that value. So you'd have to do the 13.6. And it goes to N equals 2. So subtract the 3.41. So it gains 10.19. Electron volts of energy. So we have an energy transfer from the initial incident electron and it gains 10.19 EV. So that's both marks. Calculate the frequency of the photon. So to do that, we need the energy. So we need to do the change in energy, the 10.19, multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. We've done this a few times now. And that is. 1.6304 times 10 to the minus 8 joules. You may have heard a doorbell ring then, but so far into this video, I'm not filming it again. So that's the energy. And so the frequency would sim we could simply use e equals HF. So the frequency is the energy divided by Planck's constant. So we need to do this energy and divide it by Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, which will give a frequency of 2.46 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz. Hopefully that went okay. And then we just got one more question, then we're finished. Remember to rewind or pause at any point if you need to. So next question, if you want to pause and have a go, it says the initial kinetic energy of the incident electron is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Calculate the kinetic energy after the collision. So what we need to do is the initial energy, kinetic energy of the electron and subtract the energy that is deposited into the atom. So we need to do 1.7 times 10 to the minus 18. And then subtract the 10.19 electron volts. So subtract the 1.6304 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And that gives us an energy or remaining kinetic energy after the collision of 6.96 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. And then there's a bonus question, which is calculate the velocity of the instant electron after the collision. So that's the corresponding energy which we just calculated. So we're going to use the kinetic energy equation. Energy is equal to half mv squared to find the speed. It says velocity. That is not velocity, it's speed, but we don't have any idea of any direction, so we're just finding speed. So the speed v is equal to 2 times the energy divided by the mass, square root. So we need to multiply that energy by 2, so 2 lots of the 6.96 times 10 to the minus 20, divided by the mass of the electron, which we should know, or it will be on a data sheet, or on Google, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And if you square root that answer, you will get a velocity, or speed, sorry, that is equal to 3.9 times 10 to the power of 5, meters per second hopefully that's okay uh, and helpful and i'll see you at the next one thank you